Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. What is going on, friends? Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Saturday Sports Stuff here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. We have another jam-packed show for you. You Darvish is a Chicago Cubs. Brian Urlacher is a Hall of Famer. We have to talk about Super Bowl 52. The NBA has a crazy trade deadline and your thoughts. But before we get to that, here is a quick message. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. In the biggest surprise this Saturday, you Darvish signed a six-year, $126 million deal with the Chicago Cubs. The 31-year-old last seen in the World Series getting lit up by the Houston Astros. Has This move has a lot of people you know, buzzing, talking, making their predictions already about the National League Central. The Brewers were in on this. The Cardinals were in on this. The Dodgers were in on this. So many teams trying to make a play at you, Darvish, even with his recent struggles that we saw in the biggest stage. And more importantly, I think looking at the Cubs side, is the fact that they were able to t- keep away you Darvish from the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers already have been on an absolute tear, signing Yelich and get, signing Kane, trading for Yelich, and then obviously being in the race all year in 2017. The Brewers are there for you. They were ready to make some type of move, and you Darvish it was what I believe was that tipping point to really make the division interesting. Now, this you Darvish news means Jake Arrieta's tenure as a Chicago Cub is over. And what else can be said about Jake Arrieta from 2015 to this point? He was the catalyst of this Cubs team. He was as important as anybody you could think of. Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, Addison Russell, Wilson Contreras, it did not matter. John Lester, Kyle Hendricks, Aroldis Chapman, name any player on this Cubs team. Jake Arrieta was just as important in this as them. From his no-hitters to winning those uh, playoff games against St. Louis and Pittsburgh, to helping you get another game in the Cleveland series. Jake Arrieta was a huge part of this Cubs team, and that cannot be forgotten. But with all that in, in mind, I never thought Jake Arrieta was in play for the Cubs. I really never thought, unless his number came down dramatically, unless something happened where they were able to get a, a sweet hometown deal, Jake wanted to get paid, and all the power to him. He deserved it. He bet on himself, and now it's time to cash in. The league he might be a year too late because the league isn't just playing people. But then moving that to you, Darvish, really quick, six years, $126 million, you know, in the, in the retrospect of, of the money that's being dealt in this league, it's not all that crazy. And again, it's not our money. I, people are really obsessed with money and deal and years and things like that about billionaires, paying millionaires. But since a lot of sports fans are into that, you know, 126 is not that bad. And a lot of people want to compare this to Jason Hayward. With Jason Hayward, you, you're signing a, a man at 26 years old with all the upside. And again, I don't think offensively Jason Hayward's ever going to make that turn to the money he's getting paid, but he's he's a, a gap stop. You know exactly where, what he's going to do whenever he's out there in the outfield. He's, he's just a stabilizer. So that's a different conversation for a different day in baseball. But this deal seemed very team-friendly. And again, it's all about whether you cash in or not. Because at one point, you're going to have to pay your other superstars. And if you're serious about making a Bryce Harper move in 2019, yeah, I, I could see why you're worried about money. But the Cubs have a flow coming in. And if this TV deal that they've been talking about for the last few years pans out for them, they're going to have money. They're not going to worry about the luxury tax. They, they can afford it. But this move, I think, just, first of all, it strengthens your team by giving you a good pitcher at 31 who dominated you in the playoffs. So again, it goes back to taking him away from the Dodgers, taking him away from the Brewers, taking him away from St. Louis, taking him away from teams that were going com- to directly compete against you. Now, I find it interesting with Jake Arrieta now being the, the top pitching free agent right there with, with Cobb. I think you're going to see Arietta probably land in St. Louis and Cobb end up in Milwaukee and just stacking this division. And for the Cubs, you're looking at a potential rotation of John Lester, Hugh Darvish, Quintana, Kyle Hendricks, Chatwood. You have Mike Montgomery as a long. 
Very interesting stuff in the NL Central. Very interesting signing. And it pays off if you win a championship. It's the John Lester effect. It's the Jason Hayward effect. Any one of these contracts pays itself off if you win World Series gold. It's just that simple. It didn't matter how much Chapman was making. It didn't matter about his background if you were in that situation with the Cubs, even though I had my issues. It doesn't matter if you cash in to win a championship. And this move shows the division, shows the league, and shows the city that they are true contenders. And they were already contenders. They were, they've been to three straight National League Championship Series. But they cemented themselves as a team to be messed with, to be reckoned with. And yeah, I'm a Cub fan. I'm getting ready to get my season ticket draft any day now. I should, actually, I should probably get my stuff organized. But this was a move. I don't think this was a desperate move. I don't think they broke the bank for him. It was it's an expensive contract, of course. You're paying for for you're paying for what the market determines is is this caliber of pitcher. But you've taken the best free agent. It's they're now on your team, and you didn't have to give up any prospects. You didn't have to give up any bodies. You spent money. That's it. And for the fans who always get obsessed with that, it's just money for these billionaires. And yeah, there's rules, there's cap rules, everybody knows that, but you didn't have to trade Ian Happ to get Chris Archer or Kyle Schwarber. You didn't have to make these moves. And now you have pitchers under contract. Kyle Hendricks, Quintana, Yu Darvish under contract, giving you enough time to develop your own pitching. It's a big move. It's a wonderful move. I want to know, though, what do you think about you, Darvish, signing with the Chicago Cubs on a six-year, $126 million deal? Will this start the floodgates of the what is a very slow MLB hot stove offseason? Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, MikeMercado2333. Super Bowl weekend did not disappoint, friends, as a stat class of NFL legends enters the NFL Hall of Fame, including Brian Erlacher, Ray Lewis, Randy Moss, Tara Owens, Brian Dawkins. And then on Sunday, the Philadelphia Eagles win their very first Super Bowl, beating the New England Patriots 41-33 to in Super Bowl 52. Nick Foles, your MVP, an action-packed game. And it was a fun weekend in the NFL, a great way to end what was a roller coaster of a season from the protesting to the responses of the protesting to the head injuries to the way that there was nobody knew what officiating was in the NFL anymore. Nobody knew what the rules were. Nobody knew where what a catch was, and we we even saw it in the game. But it was a a micro. It was a mac, microcosm, a macrocosm. You you whatever you want to use that as a description. That game had everything, and it was perfect. It held everybody's attention. It had action. It had some controversy. It had a good guy. It had a bad guy. And it had a payoff. Because something we've never seen before happened. And that was the Philadelphia Eagles winning a Super Bowl. And the one thing I took away from the game, and if you missed it, we actually go in-depth on it on this past episode of The Good Brothers. You can check it out on the Mercado Airwaves Network, on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves, on YouTube, youtube.com slash MikeMercado2333, on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves, and on Twitter at mmercado2333. For all you Google users, go to soundcloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. That the only way the Philadelphia Eagles were going to beat the New England Patriots, where they went toe-to-toe with Tom Brady. And think about that for a second. The only way to beat the Patriots is to match them at their game. And that really is what it is. Because they don't have a defense. And you get all the Malcolm Butler controversy with Bill Belichick of not playing him and all that to the side. They weren't a good defense. So this was going to be, can you put your foot on the throat of the New England Patriots and break them when it came to it? And they did it. New England came out of halftime and scored a touchdown, went down the field, scored a touchdown. How does Philadelphia respond? Doing the same damn thing. What was the difference between the Atlanta Falcons, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Philadelphia Eagles? They never let up. 
they never played scared. They never played preventative football. They were always going and attacking, and you saw with trick plays, two-point conversions, fourth-down conversions. It did not matter. There was one punt in that game. There was no defense, so it came down to making the plays, and in some cases, not making the plays, like Tom Brady missing that, that trick play and the ball going through his fingers. And then just suppose Nick Foles catching a touchdown, cementing his Super Bowl MVP. A huge play, whether or not it was a catch, if he if he the tight end was a runner, breaking the plane, if Clement was in bounds. Just so many things at the end of the season. All the controversy, all the drama, and it all felt right there. You think about it socially, the halftime show, as always, had controversy. Had some ups, had some downs, just like the NFL. The game, there was plays we had. We put our hands up and we're like, we don't know what's going on. You tell us. And their response was, we don't know. And we saw it on the biggest stage. And yet it feels like it played out the way it was supposed to. I don't know about you. I picked New England to win. I, I refuse to bet against Tom Brady anymore. But it felt like. The payoff was what it was supposed to. For all you wrestling fans, like we said on the Good Brothers this past week, it felt like the storyline was ended the way it was supposed to. I don't feel like anybody got robbed. I don't feel like... I, it, it didn't leave a bad taste in my mouth. It was a very fun, entertaining Super Bowl. And again, just it, it, it shows what happens when good football is played. Not, maybe not defensive, but action-packed offensive football is played. It's very exciting. And, of course, in the Hall of Fame, it just does my heart so great to see Brian Erlacher, number 54, middle linebacker of the Chicago Bears, my favorite player. Grew up watching him. I mean, he made 54 cool. You know, all of us in high school and, and in Pop Warner and all, when we all wore 54. John Cena wore 54 in wrestling. He made that number cool. And the fact that it was even a debate that he wasn't going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Why? Because Ray Lewis was on there? Ray Lewis is a great Hall of Famer. Ray Lewis is a great linebacker. He might, he's probably better than Brian Urlacher. If not for anything else, he's, he has a Super Bowl. But it's, it's, it's not by a mile. It's pretty damn close. Because take Ray Lewis out of the NFL and Brian Urlacher is the greatest linebacker of all time. Arguably. I'm not going to say for sure. Just the idea that he, he wasn't going to be a first ballot. The fact that it took Terrell Owens two times to try to get into the Hall of Fame is garbage. How can, can you, are you honestly going to tell me that Terrell Owens isn't a first ballot Hall of Famer? What? It's just good to see Brian Dawkins, Randy Moss, Ray Lewis, Terrell Owens, Brian Lerlecker all get in among some of the other legends of the sport getting in there. But this whole idea of like not deserving or because we have another person on that position so we can't vote two in or he's going to get in but not as a first ballot. What? If he's going to, what's the difference? What's the difference? You just want to hold that power to say we've, we're deciding who's first ballot and who's not? Get over yourself, you freaking writers. Sports writers and sports talk show hosts, I know, I know, are some of the worst people on this planet. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding Especially, uh, especially if you've never played. And look, I get it. Like, I don't think you, it should be one of those things where if you don't play, you don't get to talk about it. No, 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 no. But the fact that you get to judge it as harsh and as strictly for somebody to say, no, Brian Erlacher is not a first ballot Hall of Famer, and this is why. It's like, go to hell. What are your thoughts, though? What do you think about the stack NFL Hall of Fame class, including Brian Erlacher, Ray Lewis, Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, Brian Dawkins? Just some, I can't, I'm getting old. My childhood is going into the Hall of Fame. What are your thoughts? Did anybody get snubbed? And what do you think about this garbage of first ballot Hall of Famers? Let us know. If you would like to support Mercado Airwaves, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Find us on iTunes at Mercado Airwaves. Keep up to date with the show on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Follow Mike on Twitter at mmercado2333 and on Instagram, mikemercado2333. Mercado Airwaves is brought to you by supporters at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. All right, before we take your comments for this week's episode, I want to take a look back at what was a crazy NBA trade deadline week uh, shout out first of all to the Chicago Bulls for making a big move and not only making a big move but making a pretty smart move 
long story short, trading Nico Maricic to the New Orleans Pelicans for a first round pick, way more than I thought they were going to get. I didn't think they were going to be able to get a first round pick. I thought they were going to have to settle for a second round. Again, it's protected depending if they get on the top eight or the top three. But again, it just it gives them ammunition. It gives them ammunition to make another move, including if this tank keeps going the way it does. You're able to take whatever your lottery pick is if you get in the lottery and if you're able to get a high top three, top five draft pick. And if you're not, then you're able to combine that that pick with whatever you get from the Pelicans and maybe try to get up there and get a franchise player if the franchise player is in this draft and if you're able to scout them. Which, as much credit as I give Gar Foreman and John Paxson, they do know how to scout. So it should be something interesting to keep an eye out, but here's some of the other uh, crazy uh, moves that were in the NBA. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and look at the Detroit Pistons for the trade deadline. They get Blake Griffin from the LA Clippers. Uh, I mean, that was huge. I uh, Detroit getting themselves a star player again. My idea of Blake Griffin, he's a, he's a nice player. He's an entertaining player. He's not a championship player, in my opinion. He doesn't take you over the top. He doesn't do anything spectacular. He doesn't do anything better than anybody in the NBA. He's just a really, 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 really good basketball player. And he scores a lot of points. And he makes a lot lot of flashy moves. But he doesn't equate to winning championships. So I don't know what Detroit's doing there. Whether or not they're just trying to make this move to keep fans happy or if they're really thinking about contending. And then they make a move trading Jameer Nelson they get Jameer Nelson, the Bulls get Willie Reed. How about Bryce Johnson to the Memphis Grizzlies? And again, Detroit getting James Ennis, trying again to do something with this roster, trying to make a run in the Eastern Conference, if that's possible. But in a three-team trade, Dallas getting Doug McDormand. You have Denver getting Devin Harris. And the New York Knicks getting Emmanuel Mude, future second-round draft pick. So another three-team trade right there. You have Alfred Payton going to the Suns and a 2018 second-round draft pick heading to the Orlando Magic. And then what everybody's been talking about, the Cleveland Cavaliers who torch the NBA trade deadline on one of their moves, sending Dwayne Wade to the Miami Heat, getting back a second-round draft pick. Getting then Rodney Hood and George Hill, Utah getting Derrick Rose and Jay Crowder. Of course, Derrick Rose is going to be released if you are listening to this just now. Sacramento Kings getting Joe Johnson and Iman Shumpert. And in the trade of the season, the LA Lakers get Channing Frye, the 2018 first-round draft pick, and Isaiah Thomas from the Cleveland Cavaliers for Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. Now that draft pick is not the Brooklyn pick. So all this... All this speculation, all these moves, all this just leads to what the hell is LeBron going to do in the offseason? Did he make this move to make the Lakers a better team? To give him another draft pick? To put pieces around there that he likes? I don't think he likes Isaiah Thomas that much. And Isaiah Thomas is hurt. And if Isaiah Thomas is being blocked and if he can't get past that pick and roll, he's useless. So they're obviously making a run right now. And they're trying to allow themselves some type of safety net if LeBron leaves. But it was a crazy, crazy trade deadline. And for Dwayne Wade to be traded back to Miami, what does that mean? Does that does Le, Did LeBron know that he has something for a championship run? Because LeBron's the one running this team. Some people want to say that it's the GM, that this is them getting ready for, uh, for life post-LeBron, which could be a thing. Maybe LeBron is L.A. bound. But this, it's just weird. It's a weird move. And I can't put my finger on it what exactly it means. I love what the Bulls did. I love what a lot of these, I I like what LA did. I don't like Isaiah Thomas. I think he's a nice little player, but there's a reason why he's been around the league a little bit now. But it all really comes down to, is the tanking, is there, with all these trades, it comes down to you have two mindsets right now in the NBA. Go for it. Or tank. There's only maybe four teams, five teams going for it. And the rest are trying to get in the in the lottery. The problem, really look at these college players. This is not Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony. And that amazing draft. That's not it. This could be a, a nice draft. 
But I don't see any superstars. I don't see any franchise-changing players. I think the move to be made right here is to stack up as much as you can of young talent. As much as you can. Overload on it. And then make a run at an established star like a Anthony Davis or a Giannis. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about the Chicago Bulls in that instance. But it was a crazy NBA trade deadline. What do you guys think? Who won and who lost in these scenarios? But let's jump into the interweb and let's see what's been on your mind this week in the world of sports. All right, this one comes from Austin. Shout out to Austin and Lisa out there in the mountains of Colorado. Love them. Uh, This is on Brian Erlacher being named into the Hall of Fame. Frankly, after the way they treated him, this made me furious. And 54 is the only Bears jersey I own. Of course, this is coming off. Everybody thought he wasn't going to make it into the Hall of Fame. And I'm with you. Uh, I don't like, I don't really have jerseys. I have this weird thing about having another person's name on my back that's not my own. But yeah, I'm with you. I think it was it was a no-brainer and... The fact that it was even a conversation just shows how ridiculous some of these sports writers and uh, some of these Hall of Fame voters really are. And some of the last ones come about. You Darvish in the surprising news of the weekend signing with the Chicago Cubs. Neil Thacker, first three, four years will be worth it, especially if they can get back to the promised land. It's true. And it's like I said earlier on the show. If you cash in, it's worth it. If you don't, it's just like anything in sports. It was a disappointment, especially if you were considered to be one of those teams on that level. And from uh, David Foss, another friend of the show, good move in the short term, but the Cubs know to expect less in the end years. Unless they go over the luxury tax or trade Hayward, it looks like this could keep them from Harper next year. Could be operative. Well, here's the thing, and I think that's a good point, and it's... here. My big two things are, I don't know how serious the Cubs have ever been on Bryce Harper. None of us really know. We assume because he's friends with Chris Bryant, or that because they have numbers, they have money, they have a a promotion, they have marketing, they have something for Bryce Harper to really establish himself as a star. I don't, but I don't know if it's ever been a true conversation. Now, short term, the U Darvish deal is good. You are in the danger zone if he's 31 years old. He has t- had Tommy John surgery. He has come off of that bad sin in the World Series. But your team is built to win now. And all it takes is one pitcher to shut a team down and get you through a series. And you, Darvish, has that ceiling, has that ace stuff. And if you get two, three years out of it, and you're able to develop your own talent, taking everything aside from Bryce Harper, you're able to develop your own talent, with especially with arms in the farm system, while you're signing these players, and you haven't had to trade any assets? That's huge. That, I think, is the most un- underlying thing of this all. They had to give up nothing but money on this deal. So... I think it's a win-win, but it's going to be something that we're going to keep our... We have to just watch and see how it plays out, just like, especially anything with these long-term deals, just see how it plays out over the next few years. That'll do it for us, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Saturday Sports Stuff here on Mercado Airwaves. Thank you for being a part of the show. If you would like to be interactive with us, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can follow me on Twitter at mmercado2333. Subscribe, rate, review, and like us on iTunes, itunes.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Every single one of our interviews and shows are brought to you by our amazing producers over at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. If you would like to hear any one of these episodes ad-free, or if you would like to get your brand name out to a diverse, huge audience, visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves and check out the tiers that we have just for you. If you would like to see us behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. If you want a video version of the show, go to YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333. Subscribe to us and be part of the conversation. And of course, check us out on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will see you next time here on Saturday Sports Stuff on Mercado Airwaves. Have a good one, guys.